Yes, Radhe Radhe, welcome to another session of Daily Wisdom from Bhagavad Gita. Hope you all had a wonderful weekend with the book launch. Uh, and most of us would have, I guess, virtually or in person attended it. So I hand it over to Nitin Ji. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe Sandhya. Radhe Radhe Vijay Ji. Thank you for the wonderful session. Dhanya Vada Nama Namaha Bahu Samichnam. That's all I have today. <laughs> See you next week. See you next week. Thank you. So, welcome everybody to today's edition of Daily Wisdom from Bhagavad Gita. A very warm good morning, good evening to all of you and hope you had a great weekend. Uh, we had pretty exciting stuff at Temple this weekend just before uh, Swamiji's departure back to India. So, people in India must be excited. Now they'll get an opportunity to meet him. We had a very... Um, action-packed and enriching book launch here over the weekend. Hope you were able to catch action for that. We had a beautiful Q&A session as well as a lot of uh, uh, talk about the book itself. So hope you had benefited from that. So let's get started. A very warm welcome. I'm excited to be back. We had a bit of a break. Today we will continue on our journey of Bhagavad Gita. We did the anger management. We spent a good amount of time last week and today we will uh, move forward and uh, explore some more facets of Bhagavad Gita. You know, what are the things that uh, bind us here and uh, the timeline of our lives. And also, since today is uh, Children's Day, we are going to have a little bit of a discussion about that as well and watch a short video from Swamiji as well. So let's get started. I'm going to pull up my screen and then we will get started. Uh, like always, by invoking the blessings of God and Guru. So let me share my screen. Okay, hope you're able to see it. We'll get started with our opening prayers. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwar Ha. Guru Sakshat Parabrahma Tasmay Shri Guru Venamaha Vasudev Sutam Devam Kamsa Chanuramardhanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagatgurum Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru. Radha Radha, good morning, good evening, once again. All right. So today I picked up the next shloka here. I'm going to recite it and you're welcome to follow along like we always do. Raga Dvesha Vyuktestu Vishayan Indriyascharan Atma Vashar Vidheyatma Prasadam Madhigachati. All right, do we have any volunteers? Yes. Who have decided? Uh, Samji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe. Ragad Vesha Vyukta is to Vishayan Indri Aisharan Atma Vashe Vide Atma Prasada Madhigachati. Very nice. Samji, Radhade. Ode Kumarji, Radhade. 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 Ragad Vesha Vyukta is to. Vishayan Indri Aischaran Atma Vashir Vide Atma Prasadam Adi Gachati Radharade Riyaji um, Radharade, please go ahead. <laughs> Can I go next? Sure, sure, no worries. Thank you. Um, Shamji Radharade. Please go ahead. Raga Dvesha Vyukta Estu Vishayan Indre Scharan 
आत्मश्य विधेयात्मा प्रसाद अधिगछति वेरी नाइस श्याम जी राधे राधे राहुल जी राधे राधे प्लीज गो है राधे राधे राग द्वेश विुक्त स्तु विषयानिंद्रिय शरण आत्म वश्य वश्य विधेयात्मा प्रसाद अधिगछति राधे आत्म वश्य विधेयात्मा आत्मश्यवैधेयात्मा प्रसाद अधिगछति वंडरफुल वेरी नाइस अपर्णा जी Okay, we have a few more hands. We can take those before we get started. Sumesh ji, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, Sumesh ji. Please go ahead. Radhe Radhe, Radhe Radhe, everyone. Raga dhuja mi yukta istu visaya andriya is charana atma vaisair vidhe atma prasadam adigachati Radhe Radhe. राग द्वेश विुक्त विषयान्द्रिय आत्मश्यत्मा प्रसादम अधिगच्छति राधे राधे जी वी विल आल्सो जॉग थ्रू आवर सेशन टुडे ओके विल नॉट मेक इट अ स्प्रिंट टुडे ऑलराइट लेट्स टेक द लास्ट हैंड रत्ना जी राधे राधे लास्ट टू हैंड्स रत्ना जी राधे 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 राग द्वेष विुक्तैस्तु विषयानिंद्रियैश्चरन आत्मश्यत्मा प्रसाद राधे राधे राग द्वेश विुक्त विषयानिंद्रियर आत्म आत्मश्यत्मा Prasadam adhi gachati. Wonderful. All right. So let's get started. Now, in the previous shloka, we were talking about uh, anger, and uh, the genesis of anger is again in the mind, right? So now, in this one, as a follow-up shloka, Lord Krishna is talking about we lose control of our mind when we are angry, as we saw how it unfolds. Right? We had a pretty in- in-depth discussion on that topic. So in this one, Lord Krishna is saying, "But one who controls the mind," and he further goes on to qualify it with a couple of other things. He says, "And is free from attachment and aversion." We know that attachment was the root cause of all the anger unfolding, obstruction to the attachment. But he has included the other side of that attachment as well, right? When you flip a coin. you always have a other side of the coin and in this case the other side of attachment is aversion it is in fact negative attachment and then he says even while using the objects of the senses attains the grace of god okay so this is what we are going to talk about but we are going to build a bit of a business not we will go to lay the platform for this discussion now has anybody played this game you can raise your hand who know how to play this game okay nice quite a few people have right i also like to play it occasionally now whether you have played the actual game or not you all are playing this game okay and i'll tell you which how you are playing this game you all are playing this game of chess this is you who are you playing it against you know that 
you're playing it against time and the time typically is beating us hands down there was a beautiful question asked by one of the young kids young kids it's a uh, kids are meant to be young only so yeah a kid asked this question to swami ji that uh, how come you say there is no happiness in this world i do feel happy when i play video games i do feel happy and uh, when i when i play with my friends i feel happy so how come you say there is no happiness in this material world and there was a beautiful answer swami ji gave to that question question he said that right now you are young and you are pure and that is why you can extract happiness or you see happiness or there is an element of joy in everything you see but as you start growing older you would need satsang and sadhana to save as well to stay happy that was a very profound answer when i heard it for the first time you know i was thinking about it why did he say that but the fact of the matter is if we think deeply about it the little pleasures a little joy you would your mind would enable you to create when you were young when you were kid it becomes increasingly difficult to feel that way as we start growing older and that is why i'm saying we all are playing a game of chess against time and it will beat us hands down unless we start aligning to the spiritual principles as we grow up for us to stay happy we have to align to spirituality we have to do seva we have to do sadhana and we have to know how to love god there is no other way to retain that happiness quotient that we had as kid it's a very very simple principle intuitively you will understand that it's just like if you keep money in a deposit if you don't invest it somewhere the inflation will beat it similarly if we don't invest our time as we start growing old you know the mid age crisis will kick in then some other crisis will kick in and it's like crisis management from there on that artificial simulation or the happiness that we try to create through that next trip or that party and all that stuff is not sustainable it it doesn't give us the kind of bliss peace or joy that we felt by doing simple things when we were we were young and there's a reason for that now today being children's day we we'll look at it why why is it that kids they are able to feel and experience things that we are not able to and what are some of the spiritual lessons we can learn from kids before we get deeper into the topic today let's get into that so his happy children's day to all of you those who have kids or otherwise those who were kids which i am i believe everybody of us were so happy children's day regardless to all of you um let's go into some of the things that are appealing of kids what are the things that we can learn from kids not all inclusive but i picked up a few things one is of course the innocence aspect of it right which is appealing to us isn't innocence appealing to all of us it is very much in fact the first lesson of 400 bc or not being becoming innocent we get from our mother or this world only how because mother tells the kid little one when the neighbor is going to come and ring the bell you tell mother is not at home now the neighbor comes rings the bell and the kid says she asks for the mother and she says you know what my mother told me then when the neighbor will come i am supposed to tell that neighbor mother is not at home Right? and then the kid is innocent enough to tell that to mother also she said all right what happened what did you tell her i said i told her that mother had told me to tell her that she is not at home and then he gets a tight slap and he doesn't understand why he got a tight slap so that's the innocence that kids have and the very first lesson of how to become chalak or 
shrewd in this world is taught to us by world only by our immediate family members only that is how the world goes so first thing is the innocence aspect of the kids which is a great spiritual virtue and i'll get into that concept okay what else is there we have purity kids are pure you can just need to look at into their eyes and they are pure it's just like that pure drop of dew which has fallen from the sky and then the impressions of this world it starts coloring them in the mud and all that stuff so that purity is very very appealing that is why it is very natural for us to get attracted to kids in fact there are two personalities i should say or two living beings which are very easily easy to get attached to one is kids and second one is pets why kids because of we are talking about all the reasons their innocence the purity and all that stuff and second is pets because they don't even respond back kids when they start growing up the same activities that you find cute when they start doing it when they grow up you know you you say you deserve a slap for it now so kids of course um they exhibit these these uh, qualities which are very captivating and appealing to our heart and for pets also same thing happens because they are dependent on you the advantage the pets have over kids is that even when they grow up they are still dependent on you and they don't respond back to you so they become even more endearing to you so we looked at the innocence aspect of it the kids are innocent and all the char so bc aspect that we spoke through that story is taught to them by the world only they 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 don't know that they are so pure at heart when they are kids the second one is purity what else is there lack of pretense they have a lack of pretense it is said when kids they they speak a lie because they have a lack of pretense they put hand to their mouth you do like that so that is how when they how they start learning lie to begin with but as adults we we actually throw non verbal cues which lie detector can detect even for the actors but for elders we then we learn the art of spaying lie with a straight face but kids typically cannot because they are so pure at that moment and then we start tuning our subconscious around it and then uh, but then our body responds differently when we lie as kids it responds so differently that they are able you know their hand will come on their mouth but as we grow adult our body responds differently when we speak a lie and that is where this whole program of uh, such ka samna and you know i think this harvard graduate had created this program uh, test of speaking truth is based around because your body signals would indicate that you are not speaking truth but how do we master that the same lessons that we keep on learning through life the so that is the another thing which is very appealing about kids joy that joy factor we spoke about right that little boy asking how can you say there is no bliss or joy or happiness in this world who asked swami ji i spoke about they are able to create joy through simple things right a little one he would play with the you know a simple and web paper and with nothing else they don't need much they are able to create joy because the perspective that they have about the world around us it has that that uh, uh, tinge of wonder or amazement in their eyes that they always carry but like i said as you keep growing older you cannot retain that unless you start investing your time in higher things there is no way somebody can remain happy joyful like they are when they are kids it's difficult to replicate that unless you start investing time in spirituality or aligning to the higher principles to be able to retain that joy or recreate that joy no way there's no way if somebody is able to do that please share that formula with us because uh, scriptures go against that and we have a good reason to believe what scriptures are saying is right not only through our experience but through the word of word of mouth of saints as well and then last but not the least i've just see there are some of the things complete surrender this is a concept we are going to talk about in great detail uh, in coming classes maybe in the following couple of sessions we will pick up this concept of surrender 
if you look at a kid do they need to be expert in doing anything to get their job done they just need to cry and mother takes care of everything because they are completely nirashrit nirashrit means they are completely surrendered to their mother or completely dependent on their mother so they just need to cry and mother will do everything for them so this is the concept of surrender where swami ji tells us we have to revert this cycle now we have become adults we have to become like kids as pure as innocent all the processes coming back life coming back a full circle where you become like a kid in front of god and you say you are my whole and soul one i have my atma my own strength the strength of my means my relatives anybody around me is not good enough for me and i am completely dependent on you so this is the biggest spiritual lesson from kids actually they just cry out and mother comes similarly in spirituality when we will simply cry out for god if he has to come he has no choice but to come but for us to get to that state is is difficult because it requires a lot of convincing to cry out just calling out god without thinking about our own strength our relatives and everything else so this is the biggest uh, lesson from kids on the occasion of children's day i thought we'll bring in a few points around you know kids what are some of the things we can actually learn from them um topping up it up with the surrender or nirashrit aspect of it as the kid starts growing up we see right they say i need my personal space mother also starts taking a back seat and then there there's a stage when the kid will come and say you know you don't know anything i'll tell you what is right and what is wrong or what i should be doing and mother said all right i mean i have to take a back seat you will may stress over it but you take a back seat the same thing has happened with us our relationship with god as well right we say we know better our ego comes in the way and god said all right i'll take a back seat so the day we come back a whole full circle and surrender to god like a kid does to his or her mother the job will be done those tears will compel god to appear in front of you that is god's principle spiritual principle when you cry out with all even in bible it says when you you know cry out for god with all thy heart and all thy might and god will basically come in front of you so so that is a principle now let's look at a, a beautiful short lecture from swami ji let me stop share and make sure i am sharing the sound that way we are able to see this lecture and then we will move further into today's topic of discussion okay i'm sharing the sound which is good right let me share that now are you able to hear the sound you don't need to be cunning to draw the grace of god you need to be simple like a little child kapat gaant man me nahi sab te saral swabhav narayan ta bhakt ki lagi kinare nav the bible says blessed are those who are like children for they shall enter the kingdom of god first be simple be trusting be full of faith now this is easy behavior to be simple doesn't require effort to be cunning requires intellectual exertion so what is the problem in being simple the problem is that we do the reverse practice in the world the nature of the world is such it makes us practice in the reverse direction first of all we were clever and cunning as little children with our friends with our parents with the teacher we grew up and we took different professions that required us to be full of cunning and cleverness 
whether it was marketing or advocacy or whatever. So that became our nature. Now when we come before the Guru, the nature doesn't leave us. The same cunningness, the same cleverness. When we go before God, it's exactly the same. And God says, this is not the way to my grace. Niramal man jana so mohi pava mohi kapata chala chidra na bhava. But because we develop this nature of being cunning, once I was giving a lecture in Kanpur, that's in UP. So one shopkeeper was my devotee. After hearing this lecture, he said, Swamiji, you are very right. When I sit in my shop in the morning, he had a cloth shop. I take a resolve. Jhoot hi bolenge, jhoot ke sivai kuch nahi bolenge. I will only tell lies and nothing but lies. Otherwise, how do I sell the clothes? So this is how we handle the world, right? And like the dog's tail, is curved and no matter how much you stretch it, it will go back to the original shape. So even in the divine realm, we utilize the same formula. And that is what prevents us from surrendering. Surrender means to become simple like a little child. Pandityam nirvidya balena tishthaset. There is the story of one Panditji who used to worship the Lord in a Sanatan Dhar Mandir. So Sanatan Dhar Mandir has got many deities of God. He used to worship the Lord there. And for his help he had kept a little orphan boy. That orphan boy used to assist Panditji in the puja, in the cleaning, in preparing the bhog, etc. And Panditji would feed him. It was a win-win situation. So one day Panditji said, Beta, I need to go for Tirth Yatra to Badrik Ashram, Kedarnath, Gangotri, Yamnotri. I will be back in two months. For two months, you need to take care of the mandir and Bhagavan. Most important, you have to offer bhog to Bhagavan. So like I used to do, you must also do. Now the problem was that the child used to help prepare it. But the bhog used to be behind the curtain. So he didn't know what was going on inside. Now, Panditji left the rations for two months. The next day, the boy prepared the bhog samagri. He decorated it on the offering plate and he entered the altar. He placed the plate before Ram Sita Lakshman and said, Hey Prabhu, please come and accept this humble offering. None of the deities were willing to move. He said, what is the matter? Panditji said, you must offer to him. And God is not willing to eat. Maybe he doesn't like my cooking. So he went, trashed the food, prepared another plate and brought it. Hey Bhagavan, please today at least accept it. Again, the murtis are not willing to move. So the child started crying. If you don't eat, I will also not eat. He kept a fast for 22 hours. Next day again he prepared the bhog and brought it. Prabhu, today at least please accept this food and bless me. The murtis are still not willing to budge. So the boy became desperate. He picked up a stick and he said, Khate ho nahi khate ho, tumhari pitai kar dunga. If you don't eat, I'll beat you up. 
See, the stick was the symbol of his faith. He did not see those deities as stone. He saw them as the Lord. And he interacted with them in that manner. If they are the Lord, they must eat. He said, look, I am a little boy. If you don't eat, and Panditji comes to know, he will be annoyed, he'll dismiss me. Then what will I do? Where will I go? So you have to eat. All the murtis started laughing and their hands and feet started shaking. You see, God is everywhere. So is he not in his murti? He is only waiting for the day you actually have faith. Now that boy did have faith. Name priyas chaturvedi mad bhakta shwapacha smrita. God says it's not the knowledge of the Vedas, but your devotional sentiments that purchase me. All the lords, they came to the plate and they started accepting that food. Now Hanumanji was also there in the temple. He started eating a whole lot. This boy was busy refilling the plate. But Hanumanji was eating so much that it all got over. He had to go and cook more and then again cook more. The consequence was that the rations for two months got over in one week. Now he had this heavy burden of going and doing bhiksha in the market for the mandir. And whatever people would offer to him, he would bring it back, cook it and then offer to the Lord. So he had a full day's work before him. Panditji, instead of returning in two months, he came back in one month. Panditji said, Beta, I'm very tired and very hungry. Oh, give me some food. The boy said, Panditji, you know, there is nothing in the temple. I have to go and do bhiksha and then bring it. What? I left two months of rations. How come they got finished in one month? Did you sell them in the market and go and see pictures? Are, nahi, 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 Panditji. How will I ever do something like that? It is, the problem is that Bhagavan was eating so much. And you should have seen how much Hanumanji was eating. What could I do? Panditji said, Badmash, Bhagavan was eating so much. Offer in front of me and show me. Again he went, did bhiksha, brought it, cooked it. And then he said, hey Bhagavan, khai ye. Ah, Panditji was also there. God is not willing to budge. He says, please eat. And God is not moving. For the last one month he had been eating, suddenly he's not moving. So the boy says, you're going to prove me to be a liar. He picked up the stick again. Will you eat or not? I'm going to beat you. All the lords descended and they started eating. Panditji fainted. My God. Oof. My whole life has passed by worshipping the Lord. I've never seen a scene like this. The Lord himself came to eat from the plate of this little boy. What convinced them to do so? It was the simple faith. No doubts, no questions, full faith. He is God, he must eat. That kind of faith attracts the grace. That kind of faith we need towards God and the true Guru. Okay. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, illustrates the point that in order for us to get closer to God, we need simplicity, innocence, faith. And uh, kids, they have it in abundance on their parents, even on things around. And uh, on the occasion of uh, Children's Day, let's celebrate that aspect because we need to go back to where we started off with. This is the whole purpose of spirituality. Man, Bhagavan me and Buddhi in the world. So you still need to, and now you will say, if I become innocent, my boss will take me for a ride and people around will, will start using me as a doormat. So God says, handle that duality. Use your buddhi in the world 
but when it comes to matters of god and your guru god realized saint become as innocent as a kid and the day you will cry out for god like a kid cries out for his mother or her mother god will have to appear and this is whole this is the whole process of becoming like a kid nirashrit only dependent on the mother and mother is god in this case till the point we are dependent on other things our means people around relatives friends parents our own strength it will not happen god says ananyo nyashrit in narad bhakti darshan it is said when you have no other ashray in your head the only ashray is that of god that is when god will appear and he will um, basically uh, bestow his grace upon us we'll talk about this topic in more detail tomorrow also we're going to touch upon this aspect of grace and surrender these principle we will go in great depth to make sense right we it normally doesn't make sense what is grace how do we attract god's grace what is faith what is surrender right sometimes we think surrender is more like a garland that okay i'm surrendered the process of surrender is done so we'll get into detail uh, in great depth on that topic nevertheless let's move on so today we are going to talk about this topic okay in the shloka there is a concept that lord krishna is touching upon and in order to illustrate that concept let's have a quick discussion before i get deeper into that now here you see a rat its the rat is stuck in a cylinder right if you see this however even though it is open from both ends this rat is not willing to get out of it it is going back and forth between the two ends all the way to the right and then coming back all the way to the left but it is not getting out right so it is kind of in a trapped state and it doesn't know any better to get out of it does anybody know this was actually an experiment that was conducted and i'll tell you maybe some of you have already attended these sessions so you would know that but does anybody know why and then what is the lesson we'll talk about it humans can learn from it anybody knows why this rat is not willing to get out of this box even though freedom is what it intends freedom is what everybody desires and still it chooses or it feels almost compelled or obligated to stay within this box only all right let's have a quick discussion before i move further Uh, Radhe 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 Radhe. Uh, I guess uh, the rat doesn't know uh, what's there on the either side. Lack of knowledge or doesn't, I mean, may, may not be waiting for the surprise. Lack of free. knowledge, ignorance, yes. Very true. Ignorance. That's very true. Yeah. Ignorance is agyana me vasya mula karanam. They say, right? For all problems, they stem from ignorance. Ignorance is the foundation or a stepping stone for all other problems very true yes rahul yeah rahul ji radhe radhe please radhe radhe rat is enjoying the pre suk which is available in the box eating cheese and all that sleeping and be merry true it might be getting something right because of which it is choosing to stay back inside very true yes sam ji you wanted to add something more to it yes radhe radhe sam ji radhe radhe If the rat is, I think, um, greed for the carrot hanging side side to side side to side, this is not willing, not making his his choice to go out, but it is attached and uh, greed for the carrot or whatsoever is hanging mm-hmm. sometimes on the left to the right, right to the left, something like that. Yep, very true. All right, um, I see one more hand, Sai Ram Ji. Fire Tree has also sent a comment. Uh, rat is happy in his comfort zone. Rat is happy in his comfort zone. Very true. All the answers are correct. Actually, I'll I'll just add a little more color to it. Yes, Sai Ram Ji. Yeah, Radhe Radhe Sai Ram Ji. Uh, Radhe Radhe. I think everybody covered what I may have said, wanted to say, but uh, maybe I was going to say another analogy. it's similar to a prisoner who has been locked up in prison for several years if you now decide to give that prisoner freedom or continue to give him food in the prison what would that prisoner really choose many of the times they'll continue to want to be in that prison and get the food rather than choose the freedom true very true that's a very good interesting perspective in fact you know in tihar jail during the winters the prisoners the population of prisoner increases because all they want is roof on the top 
food in the mouth and a comfortable relatively comfortable sleep which in harsh winters of delhi is difficult to get so they they rather they do petty petty crimes and end up in tihar jail in fact there is a classic movie in english which is called shashank redemption and some of you might have already seen it that also talks about this concept there is a guy he he has lived in jail for his entire life and when he was freed from the jail he goes out and commits suicide why because he's not able to cope up with the life outside because all that he cared for and mattered to him or he got used to was the life inside the jail it can happen to very true yes himani you wanted to add something uh, there are two more comments kumar ji i think in line with what you said about winter uh, rat is from chicago wants to stay warm inside <laughs> rat is from chicago that's a good one and aparna ji says rat may have become lazy it's, and... it's not lazy enough because it's still moving okay but it's stopping it's, it doesn't care to go beyond that yes simani you wanted to add something and i'll get let me get into the let me add more color to it uh, so that we are able to appreciate what's happening in our life how can you there's something similar happening in our life as well to reflect upon Yes, Imani, you want to add something? Just one, one more. Like Hema also said the same thing. Yeah. Our position is similar to that of the rat in this material world. So, very okay. true. I think intuitively all the participants would know by now. Anything that is brought on the screen, which looks amusing, is something related to our life only. Very true. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Radhe Radhe, Imani, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe. it reminds me of the experiment that uh, nitin ji you had talked about in your previous sessions where mm-hmm. the experimentalists they they present an electrode with a electric shock on one hand and food on the other hand and they just keep switching it and the door is open right so uh, so the rat can either experience the electric shock or get the food and it just keeps on running from one end to the other based on how the experimentalists they are switching the different uh, uh electrodes and but but the rat has option to leave this uh, setup which which is an uh, uh, which is similar to human life like we can follow a spiritual and devotional path and escape this uh, realm of maya which but this rat prefers to get stuck in this uh you know running from one end to the other true very true that's the whole gist of it um let's quickly move forward and then lakshmi ji real quick you wanted to add and ratna ji one comment each and then we can move uh, further into this concept because it's a very important concept that we need to reflect upon um in 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 context of what we are discussing today yes lakshmi ji yeah, radhe radhe lakshmi radhe radhe here the rat is being tuned like comfort zone with the food without any effort so even though when gates are open to the world very hard to work hard it is being comfortable in this zone so doesn't want to do any work in the comfort zone for food comfort it is zone. getting it so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Sure. yeah comfort zone is also good nobody has said that rat is seeing cat on either side okay which is good all right yes ratna ji real quick yes uh, radhe radhe uh i think it is that uh, sense of uh, limited uh, beliefs and also that kupa manduk buddhi that it believes uh, this is itself is the whole True. life or whatever kupa manduk say nyay darshan in our scripture is the scripture which explains a lot of concepts very logically and it talks about the concept of kupa manduk nyay what it means is that if we have seen only this much our view our perspective is limited to that much only it's like a frog in a well if another frog jumps in from an ocean and tries to explain how big the ocean is this frog will not be able to understand it will say this much this much this big this big but ocean it's not able to perceive similarly when saints descend and they try to explain us the spiritual bliss or the possibilities we cannot comprehend it but they try to tell us as best as they can which is limited by these words as best as possible and then hope that we tread on this path and start tasting that one day but this is very true it is limited by our perspective and our experience 
Uh, so there's a leap of faith that is needed to understand the possibilities beyond that. Yes, Sumedha ji, real quick. Yes, Sumedha ji. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Um, my, I'm actually picking back to um, comments that others have shared. Um, I guess the rat is so accustomed to the darkness. I, I Maybe he's fearful to face that uh, bright light. Mm -hmm. And so True. he just wants to keep hiding. So again, it's just picking back to what others have said. Sure. And all, all points, they do make a lot of sense. So let me tell you about this now. Let's get into this. So this is the timeline of our life. Start, stop. Right? From birth to death. It's a journey from B to D, a journey from B to D, and in between comes C, right? The choices that Swamiji talks about. Now, what happens is, let's look at this rat, what's going on. So this is an experiment conducted by a scientist, like Imani pointed out. So what he did was he put two electrodes. On one side, he put a bread, piece of bread or a carrot, you can say, and on the other hand, it did put a current. So in a short while, rat was intelligent it figured out this is where it gets bread and this is where it gets an electric shock and as soon as it figured out the electrodes were swapped now where he was getting bread he is going to get current and now where he was supposed to get current he is going to getting bread but after a while it figured it out again as soon as it figured out it was swapped again and it kept on switching the moment it would figure out until it came to a point that rat got utterly confused. Okay, the doors were opened and all it cares for is where am I going to get bread and where am I going to avoid electric shock from? That's all it cares for in the life. And that is what Lord Krishna is talking about in this shloka, the concept of attachment and aversion. All our entire timeline of our life is centered around this is what I want or this is what I like and this is what I don't want and this is what I don't like. Rag or Dwesh, they are two sides of the same coin. One is a positive attachment, one is a negative attachment. And whatever takes our mind space is first of all limiting us, but more importantly, to the detriment of our spiritual progress, it limits the possibilities. Because all we care for is, this is what I want in life, this is what I don't want in life, this is what I'll you know, prefer, this is what I don't prefer. This is what is palatable to me, What this is what is not palatable to me. This is what I want more of. This is what I want to avoid at all costs. And God is saying, Rag and Dwesh, only when you get over these, will your mind be able to come to a position where you can control it basically, or you are getting closer to that state of equanimity. So our timeline of life is all about these two aspects, like this rat, we are stuck between our hankerings and aversions. God says become equanimous to those things. So whenever you start developing a strong attachment or strong hatred or a strong bitterness or a strong, you've got to be watchful because now we are going against the principle which Lord Krishna is telling us will take you further away from joy bliss that you are looking for. And he said simply, let it pass by as a fleeting emotion. Fleeting means this too will pass. But if you start deepening your sun scars around it, first of all, it will be a binding, binding uh, karma that you are doing in your mind. And secondly, you are going to deepen your sun scars that you would have to live with. Because your mind and sun scars are not going anywhere. Whenever we come back as humans, Again, we'll have to deal with these kind of things in our mind. You know, strong attachment, strong resentment. Basically, sanskars are something we are creating, those impressions in our mind that we'd have to deal with sooner or later. So, if you look at our timeline of life, this is just like that rat. You know, switching between these two things while the spiritual possibility goes much beyond. But then it comes to a point that that's the only thing we care for. We don't want to get out of it. I won't call it a comfort zone, but it, we call it as a zone that we want to dwell in. And our belief system says, this is what life is all about. I have to get the bread, I have to avoid the shock. I have to move away from shock and I have to get closer to the bread. That's all we care for and, and the life passes by. And then another life, same. And then another life, and then another life. 
while the doors are open um, if we start aligning to these principles and that's what lord krishna is telling us so rather than being like this rat we need to figure out a way to first acknowledge the doors are open and then find a way out of it right like we do and uh, the fact that we reading bhagavad gita or trying to understand the spiritual principles is a step closer to getting beyond that electric shock and the bread that scares or entices us all right any thoughts comments on this one before we go further uh, uday ji has sent a message saying excellent moral of this experiment yes it's an interesting experiment um, for sure uh, and it it gives us a lot of perspective about our life when i heard it for the first time from swami ji was like wow you know this is essentially the timeline of our life wants and aversions hankerings aversions hankering aversions that is how we spend our life right while the possibility is much more than that okay um anything else anybody wanted to add so any announcements before i go further before that i would really like to uh congratulate the super hundreds so i was looking at some of the statistics you know all the way from when we started all the way now you know there are close to about 100 people in our sessions directly or indirectly who participate through the videos and through other channels and directly in these sessions as well uh 20 30 are floaters but 60 70 are very very consistent i have seen you know that's a number so these are the super hundreds i must congratulate you for the fact that you know this is the ratio 100 out of 7.8 billion which is about you can see the percent okay that is the part of that elite percentage you are part of and it is a reason to congratulate yourself because it is a huge deal okay just to tell you the 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 you know mag- what do you call that big as it is a big thing basically because doing that intellectual sacrifice on a regular basis is a huge deal and uh, please keep inspiring your friends and telling people to come attend these sessions or get associated in some form or way because it is very very beneficial it is said the spiritual knowledge that we get right we have gotten from a rishi rishi rain is something we can never become uh, you know we can never pay back but the only way we can do that is by getting somebody else on this path so that they can also benefit from this knowledge just imagine the the possibilities it opens up for them when they know that there is life beyond bread and current also okay and those are the possibilities that open up only when we start understanding the higher principles okay any announcements uh, or any any comments on the discussion that we have had today by the way tomorrow we are going to discuss about an important concept which is the grace what is this grace and how do we stake a claim for that right? there are different ways we can acquire it you know can we get it can we buy it can we snatch it can we forcefully obtain it we are going to put it in perspective eventually leading to the concept of faith and surrender so this is a very important foundational concepts that we are doing as part of our journey for chapter 2 that we are doing before we get into chapter 3 again talk about some of the concept of karam vikaram akaram karam sanyas and then back to where we left off in chapter 4 okay technically we are in chapter 4 shloka 32 i believe but this is a journey we have taken to recap the concepts and i hope you are finding it rewarding okay i see one hand samji you have to promise it has to be an easy question okay <laughs> go ahead please radhe radhe samji radhe radhe nisha this is not question nitin ji uh, like uh, when i <clears throat> uh, saw that electrode experiment when i heard that <clears throat> i was thinking material world is so wonderful like very recently i had experience right the place where i'm thinking like there is happiness immediately from there i got shocks this is happening repeatedly wherever we think there is happiness the, the bread we are going and then it is suddenly switching to shocks and still uh, the mind is not getting convinced uh, that there is no happiness and there is only happiness in god and guru but how much energy it is taking to convince that and then to start loving them i feel like i haven't even stepped uh, stepped into it into the tell you a story of a pig narada comes and tells a pig you know what 
you are rolling in mud okay in this dirty mud and uh, let me take you to higher abodes the possibilities are immense you deserve better in life he said really you are going to take me to some better place he said sure let's go then so the pig starts going with him and on the way pig has a question he asks narad am i going to get mud there narad said of course not then he said what am i going to do there i would rather go back so mm-hmm. that pig is compared to indra the state of indra who has the possibilities to enjoy much higher level of bliss than we can mm-hmm. even only hope for in this material world that is that happiness is equated to the happiness of mud like a pig rolling in mud but then the pig becomes so habituated of enjoying that happiness that it's very difficult for it to let go of it as well and that is where we have to take a leap of faith and and believe our scriptures and saints that you know you deserve much better and there are possibilities are immense and god also tests right now he is not even started testing us with bhakti if he starts testing us we will never want to get out of this jail he will give us so many carrots all right this is the person you want this is the object you want this is the palace you want this is the power you want this is the fame you want will you stop here and we will very happily stop at that point and those tests will start by the way then he will start testing you at the next level this is the siddhi you want higher siddhi you want so he will stop throwing you carrots along the way only when you have knowledge you can beat it like a non a vegetarian would look at fish right you simply keep going progressing god only thing i want from you is you only then god will say now i'll meet you but along the way there are so many carrots he can throw your way and we have to keep rejecting it because otherwise we'll get stuck so that is where knowledge comes in handy krishna can do testing big time in bhagavatam there lot that krishna serial i like that song there was there there was a lady comes and gives him some fruit and then on in return he gives him some ornaments back right then there's a song that comes soch samajh ke saudha kijiye ye nand ka lal bada vyapari that means god is a big businessman okay he is going to test you big time will you stop here will you stop here will you stop here and you will say i know i will not stop anywhere i'll reject everything all i need is you then god will meet you see even in material world in order for us to clear an entrance how much how much does it take and here we are talking about clearing the entrance of god you have to really be at the best of up your game keep on upping your game and we get stuck hung up in very small small pleasures which are not even permanent which we don't even know are truly pleasures or not so we need mm-hmm. to beat that with knowledge that's the only way but if we get stuck then it's our problem we can do it at our own risk making sense yeah you have to trust that sam ji no other choice you know there is no plan b or plan c there is only one plan plan k to krishna that's it no other plan as such nobody has that to be honest okay see it's like gambling right i keep on saying that we gamble in this world and we have been gambling in this world for so long you will gamble on god once the world is What? not running away anywhere it is by default waiting for you with open arms right so, so that let's let's gamble for a change and see what happens whatever krishna is giving i am not liking whatever okay. i am liking krishna is not giving the god give us gifts not necessarily in the package that you want it in okay mm-hmm. it's giving you things which are good for you only but the problem is we want it package it also the way we want mm-hmm. that is the problem right you are getting what you need but you have to trust the packaging also see the worst thing god can do to us fulfill all the desires that we have that is the worst thing he can do because we are anyway on a self destruct and a suicidal mission we are like that kid in a jewelry store who will keep on settling for candies only so we have to trust krishna on that he has the best interest in his heart for us and the best plan that he can possibly have for us to bring out the best version of ourselves if we don't have that we have to solidify that faith but if krishna were to fulfill all your desires sam ji will 
will basically will be on a self destruct path okay so you have to trust krishna on that i mean yeah wonderful and in fact that's why kunti asked for this right that give me miseries so that i continue to stay attached with god and do not get uh, distracted by these worldly puny pleasures yeah it said that i asked god for wisdom and he gave me problems to solve i asked god for strength and he gave me obstacles to climb so god has his way of teaching us and he's a perfect teacher and he knows he'll give us a test based on our capacity only he's not going to give you a test much beyond your capacity to break you down so even our prarabdh the way that drop this drop is picked in a particular life is basically with a with a understanding that you can actually utilize that prarab to uplift yourself the test which which are designed for you in this life are well within your reach will enable you to raise your game not break you down you have to have trust on god for that that is how even our prarab is designed there is no test beyond our ability every test is given to us as per our ability only when we keep on raising our ability he keeps on raising our test so you are stuck in bhukti test only how will you reject mukti you are stuck in very small bhukti then think about mukti you'll say no no give bring it on i'll i'm i'm fine with this only god says no i have something best for you so just just hang tight there okay Um, all right couple of hands let's take couple them. of hands and couple of comments and questions should i do the announcement first and then sure sure let's do that and then we'll continue okay so first of all this book is out and then if you can yeah the book uh, the new book by swami ji golden rules for living your best life uh, and i can if quickly also share the screen for another announcement sure so this is about the tours so swami ji is now in india so the tours have started there um and th- these are the dates i have also posted it in the chat like you can see whichever city you are in when he will be there do not miss the opportunity to meet him there and uh, regarding the yeah i mean actually so i just wanted to yeah so regarding the book there was this wonderful session that had happened and i've shared the link for this so you will all get some snippets about uh, what is this book about and what one can actually learn about all the areas of life the tools and nuggets so do explore this and people in india you have a chance to get digitally signed copy uh, by swami ji so hari and only the first 2000 people will get that so please order via amazon that's it wonderful so Great. these were the announcements thank you sandhya all right so what are the questions or we have see three hands we can quickly go through yes. those Okay, so in the chat, uh, there is this question from Priya Ji. Rag is typically associated as anger or arrogance. In this example, is it temptation or pleasure? Rag is basically positive attachment. You know, you may you may feel liking for some object or hankering for that. So, rag is basically positive attachment. Is what it is in this particular example. It's referring to like the bread that that rat is seeking, and dwesh is. Rag is hankering, duaceous, uh, the aversion. aversion, aversion aspect of it, liking, not liking, kind of. I think Preeti ji had raised her hand. Preeti Talati ji. Yeah, and and um, Kumar ji has mentioned we want pizza and coke. Krishna wants uh, us to have neem juice for our health. So neem juice. it may taste uh, bad in front but then in long run it is good right amle ka swad and bado ka khel after a while it makes sense that is how krishna teaches us yes preeti ji you wanted to say something yes radhe radhe preeti ji please go ahead yeah i was talking about a man that um went to sleep and he was a thief and bad person but always desired that everything happened according to his plan 
So he wakes up and he wanted to go to casino and drink and have beautiful girls and everything's happening exactly the way he wants. He puts money in the machine and all the machines are getting the money he wants in the and the next day he says, oh, I want even more beautiful girls, more stronger alcohol and more money. And it's happening third day, same day. After a month, he knows he's going to win. He's going to have pretty girls. He's going to have nice food. He gets really tired and he goes to the manager and he said, oh, I think maybe I died and you put me in heaven by mistake. And the manager says, who said this is heaven? So everything that he wanted, all his desire was coming true constantly. And when, when you have all your desires come true 24 seven and there is no obstacle, it is like a hell. <laughs> so the story that I was trying to say is God puts obstacle in our way to teach us lesson like you know, Nitinji was saying, so it is so true, you know. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. That's the way of God, the way He teaches us lessons, and He wants our best version to shine forth. And that is the whole idea about it. Beautiful. Thank you, Preeti Ji. Yes, uh, Keshab Ji is there. After a long, good to see you, Keshab Ji. Very nice. And Radhe Radhe Keshab. Hi, Radhe Radhe Nitinji, same here. Yeah. Actually, I just heard a couple of minutes ago you saying nobody in this world is ready for that to get out of this rag and dvesh. No, people and are ready. Majority, people, this, are, majority is not. People are ready. Major, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sorry. So I was thinking, I think a lot of people are there. Our, first of all, our own Swami Mukhananda ji. True. Very they, true. They are here. And he has a lot of knowledge and in-depth understanding. And anyway, that coming back to what I wanted to say was, we are three bodies, Suksham Shreer, Sthul Shreer, and Karan Shreer. Karan Shreer is not at all taking test of us. Karan Shreer is God and he's not testing us. That is a totally different viewpoint, you know. So he's, he keeps on doing what we want and the body's made the bodies in which our Suksham Shri has to go because of our karma, Karan Shri takes it that to that next, next life. So it is actually I who has to be ready like Raja Janak. I'm not a king. I'm just a human being like each and everybody in this world. So I have to act like Raja King so that, no, I have understood. God is here for me and life from, like uh, Advantis says, like, like Sola Hazar, trillion years have passed in this soul, my soul life so far. And God is taking birth and birth for me. So now no more. I wish for, not for me, but for God. I don't want my God, my current Shreer in me to take another birth after this life. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you very much. Yes. When I said, yeah, it's majority who are not interested, but yeah, like Lord Krishna has also said in Bhagavad Gita, Sahistreshu, amongst millions, one would strive for this path. And even amongst them, one will truly try to understand him. And amongst them as well, very few will reach him. So yeah, majority doesn't want to, but that doesn't mean nobody. Nobody would be a strong statement, very true. And our scriptures also say, Dwaya Suparna, there are two birds. One bird is tasting the fruit enjoying it or finding it bitter or sweet. The other bird is simply noting down the karma of that bird. So that is the Kshiro Dikshai Vishnu aspect, Paramatma aspect who is residing within us, who is looking at the Atma. And it is said this is one bird, the other bird is like this, you know, with the back. And when we turn our back towards it, that is the whole process of spirituality. We have turned our back towards God and just relishing that fruit. Sometimes we enjoy that fruit, sometimes we don't like that fruit. And that is rag and dwesh is where we are getting stuck. Beautiful point, Keshav Ji. Manish Ji, and then I think Monica Ji had raised her hand as well. So let's quickly take those before we get into our devotional segment. Yeah, Radhe Radhe Manish Ji. Uh, Radhe Radhe Manish Ji. Radhe Radhe everyone. Uh, yeah, so like you said, Ji, about the desire. If every desire is being met, then Maya, God's energy is not 
be able to do its job that God has assigned. So with the obstacles coming in our way or suffering, it, it's said that suffering is sometimes directly given by God for spiritual progress. So the obstacle is put in so that we can improve and get better and improve our spiritual journey and move towards him. And yep. then um, for Sanji, uh, I've been trying to work on is Prasad Buddhi, which I've picked up. And I try to accept everything that comes my way, whatever comes my way as a Prasad of God. And I'm still learning on that, but I'm trying to learn that every day and apply that in my life. True. Thank you, Radhe Radhe. Prasad Buddhi, I think it's a great tool for sure. And we will reconcile the difference between Prasad Buddhi and surrender. Right? One of the questions that came, if Prasad Buddhi is the way to go, why did Draupadi call Lord Krishna? Give him trouble for that. Why not Prasad Buddhi for that as well? Interesting point. We'll talk about that. Yes, and the misery that we talk about, it's basically to enable us from becoming a butterfly, from being a caterpillar. And we have heard about that story where the larva, pupa, it comes and it's only through. If you don't allow that struggle to happen that the larva is having within that cocoon, it will not push the fluid out to the right spots where it can grow wings and fly. It will simply fall down on its belly. So similarly, the struggle that we go through is similar to the struggle that larva is going through that cocoon. And when it comes out, it grows wings and soars high in the sky. Not high in the sky, butterfly, I mean, as far, I mean, basically is able to grow wings. Similarly, the struggles that we go through enable us to grow our wings and move to the next stage in life. Otherwise, we'll remain where we are. It's only through tests that we raise our level. Same thing happened in the material world. We cleared first, we cleared second, third, and this whole universe is designed in a way that it is working like a sandpaper. It's filing us so that we become polished and become the best version of ourselves. Other way of looking at it is it is chiseling away the things that are not needed in us. There was a guy who saw a beautiful deity of Buddha in a stone. You know, it, he said, how did you carve it out from a flat stone? He said, for me, it was always Buddha. I just took away the part which was not Buddha and it came out. So God is also working on us like that. He's doing our anarth nivritti through giving us tests and he, he's very pleased when we get out of that test with flying colors. Yes, uh, Monica ji had a question as well and then Sam ji. Um, Lakshmi ji has also sent in a comment where she says that the difficult pathway which ends in happiness is a long lasting happiness and things which give us easily happiness are usually short lasting and are not very really persistent this is an instant gratification world right now but then instant gratification is not it is shreyas and prayas sukh we'll talk about in anything that you can get immediately instantly is not worth it basically it's a difference between dopamine and serotonin as well right instant coffee instant maggi instant gratification instant thrill all that is pleasurable but not beneficial so beneficial things are typically not instant. They take a bit of an exertion and then it will give you the satisfaction of something which is much more lasting, for sure. Samji has chewed all her nails, not at all convinced. Go ahead, Samji. Yes, Samji. Please go ahead. But I still like material life. You can start with that. <laughs> <laughs> So Prashad Buddhi, when like God is the one who is giving, who gives us something, and eventually it turns out opposite. In the beginning, we have to take us Prashad Buddhi, and uh, eventually also like whatever shocks it gives, still we have to take us Prashad Buddhi because you said we have choices to make between birth and death. So obviously, so we have choices make... intuitively. That's why I'm saying your intuition is a great asset as you progress spiritually. Your intuition will start guiding you when you whenever you have had had enough basically see if 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 that was the case if newton newton i'm saying even edison would have said after the first failure prashad buddhi then what we wouldn't have seen electric bulb and not be sitting in this session today so he knew that you know there is something more he could try but intu that intuition is harnessed over a period of time where beyond a point, if it is not working out, God will give you enough signals to say that now you need to have acceptance around this thing. So that is a that is a 
thing that gets developed over time where you know now it is time for prasad buddhi as opposed to retry but the key thing in both the cases is you are not hung up to the outcome where your happiness or distress depends on that you are just putting in your best karm yoga aspect is still there right if you are doing something thinking my whole life depends on it and i'll be extremely unhappy if it doesn't happen or if i'll be extremely happy if that doesn't happen that itself is a wrong approach the karm yoga principle is already violated there you see what i'm saying so intuitively a lot of signals will start getting okay anybody else had any questions we can continue this discussion sam ji uh we get for the devotional segment for the day monica ji do you want to she had raised hand okay oh, you, got the, you got the answer already through sam ji's question probably great you no. can start speaking i have unmuted you that i can't hear you it radhe radhe will we, we 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 have not mastered the art of lip reading as yet maybe we'll <laughs> in one of the sessions but we can't hear you okay let's try once more yeah can you try now not able to hear you okay we can talk separately yes swati ji you wanted to yes swati ji radhe radhe yeah discussion is over should i for uh, i am talking for thinking all right sure so you can raise if your hand okay. you all, i think we can spend a few minutes on our devotional segment technically our session ends at 10 but uh, we do chanting so uh, who all are there swati ji is there is there anybody else who wanted to do that sandhya you had something as well i believe okay um and who else and manish ji has just sent a message i thought i'll quickly read it aap uh, saath buddhi means don't complain but it doesn't mean stop trying so perseverance is very important true very true perseverance is a very important okay swati ji please go ahead the floor is all yours yeah thank you radhe 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 govind hare gopal hare jay keshav madhav sham hare गोविंद हरे गोपाल हरे जय केशव माधव श्याम हरे गोविंद गोविंद गोपाला गोविंद गोविंद गोपाला गोविंद हरे गोपाल हरे जय केशव माधव श्याम हरे जय मुरली माधव श्याम हरे जय जय प्रभु दीन दयाल हरे जय कृष्ण हरे गोविंद हरे जय जय गिरिधर गोपाल हरे गोविंद हरे गोपाल हरे जय केशव माधव श्याम हरे thank you radhe radhe thank you swati ji very nice today was the longest you sang by the way it did really well yeah. <laughs> thank you for that very nice wonderful um i see a lot of hearts being sent your way let me do the same as well all right yes wonderful so today you want to do go ahead please so we'll have two presentations today and then one go ahead yeah i i am not like singing but i had i came across a bhajan and i just prepared so, a quick presentation around it we have and a I, surprise package today then please go ahead and i think all, all of us can sing along uh being sure. muted but we all can sing along so i'll just start sharing that sure. okay. this is a bhajan written by maharaj ji Very it's a kawali actually um and let me just start sharing the sound as well this is the first time we are going to have this kind of a presentation okay so okay. let's brace up kine se unko dekha gazab ho gaya ha gazab ho gaya kine se
गजब हो गया Oh, wow that was a fast track kawali wonderful that was a good innovation i think we should do more of it uh, beautiful we can create more of such content and beautiful picture that you picked up of lord krishna that was a very very enchanting picture i have been looking at it for the whole day and i can i think look at it <laughs> very nice <laughs> but good yeah uh, i mean this bhajan is actually long uh, even the entire thing i thought like for keeping the time here i took clips but it's so beautiful, beautiful bhajan and i can share the link and all of us can watch well, it sure there. that'll be great that was wonderful i love the innovation around it great so with that i think we come to the end of today's session i look forward to seeing you tomorrow we will talk about the concept of grace and then gradually you know get into the concept of surrender as well later this week so with that uh, thank you again for your enthusiastic participation and giving 60 plus minutes of your day and i look forward to seeing you tomorrow wonderful day and have a great rest of your evening as well radhe radhe from my side have we stopped the audio No, I am stopping it rather. Sure, otherwise... Yeah, thank you everyone. Thank you everyone. I was about to share the link, but I think it's late, so I'll share it on CIC. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.